trying to get this in right. Um, show you a little bit of what it takes. I have this um, nice USB light that I could point where I need it to be. This is a, um, a 1940 Singer 128 um, that I decided to purchase at a bargain price of $6.99. And my plan was to paint it to begin with. Now my plan is to foil it. So I'm going to show you um, one little clip of what it takes to foil this machine. Ready? Go. So this is what your foil paper looks like. I got this from Autistic Painting Studio in California. This is the um, side you would put against your project. This side, the shinier side, is your carrier side. So this is what you rip off after you've applied it. So let's just see how this goes. Um, this is the first time I've done this, so it's a little difficult to decide which way to maneuver the paper. But, heck, I think I'm going for it right here. So this is what you would do. Get your foil down on there as much as you can. And seeing as I had a little bit of trouble when I was practicing, um, the creator of this paper, um, designer, says hit it with a little heat. So I'm going to use my hair blower. Just a little bit. As we're getting into the cooler days, I just want to get the best transfer I could get. And then what you do is you take a regular nail brush and um, what was suggested is to cut the bristles down so you get this very firm feel to it. You don't want a soft brush. You really want to go for it. So here goes. You want to get as far as you can, but you want to leave your edges because you're going to need those to lift it off. Might as well go under here. What I needed to mention prior to putting this on here because obviously this is not sticky paper in itself. This is not like contact paper. It's more like a gold leaf. Is you need to apply a coat of adhesive, foil adhesive. And this is the foil adhesive I use. It's not by the same person and I it's not by the same person who um, designed the, the um, foil but I got this one off of Amazon and it's been working fine and what you do is you fine brush this on you try to keep as much let me read this for you it says metallic leaf gilding adhesive and so what you want to do is put this on as smoothly as you can and keep um, your brush marks to a minimal because you will see them through you will see them through the paint, through the foil, if you're not careful. But if that doesn't matter to you, just go for it. I'm at the point where this is my first experience with this. And I decided to not let myself worry too much. And that this is the um, 
noticeable part of noticeable part of the machine. I really hope this comes out some kind of nice. So here goes. Take a peek. Oh, I like that. I like that. You see that? It gives it a marble look. And you see that there's a little bit of foil um, color. There's some color left on here that should be in that spot. Just put it back down. That's why you don't lift the whole thing off. Don't lift the whole thing off at once. Because um, you'll probably miss getting it in that spot again. There it goes. There it goes. And sometimes, like, my paper was probably wrinkled a little bit. So let me help it flatten out a little bit. What's nice about the choice that I made was that it's looking like marble anyway. So if I, if I leave those lines because of user error, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sweat the little things. This is all an experiment. We know all about the, um, happy accidents, right? Especially um, if you're creating things, you know we often have happy accidents. So, let's see what she really looks like. You ready? Let me bring this in. Whoa. That is something so much nicer to the machine. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. And all you have to do is like put it down again. I would put it down again here. Find a spot on my foil. Um, still has color. Put it down again. Burnish it down again. Using the nail brush. But that's it. And you see how this is all done. That's just a smudge that will come out because this is all getting top coated. But you see how you see the lines? Those are the lines in the glue underneath the foil. Um, very hard to um, know that when you're a newbie. But... Um, let me see if I can move this light a little bit. Well, you know what? It's this light. Whoop. That doesn't help at all. Okay. That... That gives it a better look. Oh, there you go. So, you see these lines? I've tried a few times. But here's the thing. I'm going to end up top coating this machine with a nice clear... And I'll show you what I did with the hand wheel. It's really called a balance. Let me put the light back on. It's really called a balance wheel. So, I did top coat that. Look how beautiful that looks. I'm hoping that the clear top coat This is all tape that's coming off because, you know, there's silver under here. There's nice chrome under there that gets polished with, actually, car bumper polish. And then, if anyone wants to know, this is the paint I use. It's KBS Clear Diamond Finish. High Performance Clear Coat tough and durable. And I saw someone else use this. Um, if you watch um, Promethean Sewing Machine on YouTube, she is um, amazing with what she does. Um, she has the facility to do it in. I don't. So I'm literally doing this in my apartment, in my kitchen. My kitchen slash workbench slash grooming table slash
cutting mat. Cutting area <laughs> for when I'm cutting up my fabric. Anyway, I know the light the light just went bad. Let me do this. I'm so sorry. But I'm going to put this piece on here. I'm gonna get it started. I need to brush again. I'm learning that the real trick to this is not to hurry. Don't just brush it and try to take it off. Brush it a lot and 